quasi here. This is a world that has always been run from the shadows, with secrets and only shared with those who are worthy enough to receive them. Now for a long time, secret groups have quietly shaped our world. You might have heard of some of them, like the Illuminati or the Knights Templar. These groups are believed to have had special knowledge that gave them power over others. Curiously though, many of these groups have disappeared or gone into hiding. But one still stands out even today, the Freemasons. The Freemasons are a group that started a long, long time ago, around the time when knights and castles were still around. Now at first, they were builders who made beautiful churches and cathedrals in Europe. But over time, they started focusing on something even bigger, ideas and knowledge about life, the universe, and everything in it. In 1717, they officially became an organization in England, and soon after, they conquered the world from the shadows. When someone joins the Freemasons, they start in a group called the Blue Lodge, where they learn three basic lessons or degrees. But here's the catch. These lessons are like puzzles. They're meant to keep the real secrets hidden until the person is ready to understand them. Many people say that the Freemasons keep their true knowledge hidden until someone proves that they're truly worthy. Now, after completing the basic training, some Freemasons go on to learn even more in something called the Scottish Rite. The highest level you can reach in the Scottish Rite is the 33rd degree. It's a big honor and only a few people ever achieve it. But there's something even higher than the 33rd degree that most people don't even know about. And this is called the Grand Cross, an award given to very few 33rd degree Freemasons for their amazing traditions. You might be surprised to know that many important people in history were Freemasons. In fact, 14 US presidents, along with many judges and lawmakers, were Freemasons. This means their ideas and decisions manipulated the country and the world in ways we don't even realize. But what's so special about being a Freemason? Well, famous people like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and even the composer Mozart were really? Freemasons. You know, it seems they had access to some kind of secret knowledge that made them stand out. And after studying this for many, many years, I believe this knowledge isn't just for Freemasons. It's connected to other ancient teachings from all over the world. In today's video, I wanna share with you what I've learned over the last eight years of deeply studying the ancient laws that govern our universe, of which there are four main laws that govern everything. Now, these laws are rules for how the world works, and they've been around for centuries and appear across different cultures. Now, once you master these four laws, you'll essentially gain mastery over your own destiny, your own self, and gain the power to influence your reality in any way you please. So, without further delay, let's get started. One of the greatest 33rd degree Masons that has ever lived, I believe, is a gentleman by the name of Manly Palmer Hall. Now, what's so interesting about Manly Hall is he was the only one who made an effort to reveal these secret teachings to the masses. And he mainly did this through his books. But unfortunately, a lot of his books are very, very difficult to comprehend and a lot of people haven't been able to understand them. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the four main laws that keep reverberating through all of his texts, but in particular, this book called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. So I'm going to be sharing with you what these laws are. The issue is what most people try to do, especially nowadays, we try to take these symbolisms and all these teachings that are in all of these holy books a little too literally. When we take these teachings literally, we're actually doing them a disservice because they weren't meant to be literal. What you can see, touch, and what's subject to the senses, you can't just take them literally. You have to go beyond and learn to deconstruct these teachings. So with all of these teachings, they've either been forgotten throughout the ages and not properly passed on, or they've just been taken way too literally. Another interesting thing to note is that in the Bible, Christ's disciple asks him, why do you speak in parables? To which he replies in Matthew 13, 11, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. 
from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. From this particular verse, we can take away something very, very crucial. True knowledge is not learned, it is known. You simply know it, just like the existence of God. I always find it funny when people ask me if I believe in God, to which I answer, I don't believe in God, I know God. Because to believe means there is room for doubt. Whenever you believe in something, you're basically saying, I don't know that it's real. I believe in it. I don't really know it. But when you know deep down the existence of something, it is simply known. It is not questionable. There is no doubt. With these four laws, my wish for you is to internalize them, to fully know them. Because I know that if you do, and the realization occurs within you, these laws will be a way of being for you, not something that you have to do. It is going to be your mode of operation. And when that happens, you will see profound transformation happen in your life. And in a few short years, you're going to wake up one morning and be like, holy shit, is this really my life? This is unbelievable from where I was just a few years ago. And that is my deepest wish for you for all of the, with all the videos that I make, not just this one in particular. So with that, let's go and get started with the very first law that is a theme in Freemasonic teachings, Manly Palmer Hall's teachings, and also a lot of these ancient yogic knowledge, Buddhist knowledge, Hindu knowledge, all of these ancient texts, they all mention just these four laws. So law number one that is a very common theme across all of these teachings is the law of awareness. There's a direct quote that can be attributed to Manly Hall. Wisdom fears no thing, but still bows humbly to its own source, with its deeper understanding loves all things, for it has seen the beauty, the tenderness, and the sweetness which underlie life's mystery. What's the crucial theme that you're seeing? What's the crucial word here? The word source. So for most people, they think that the source of my misery is are my thoughts. So I have to get rid of my thoughts. The source of my misery are my bills and all the problems happening outside. So I have to get rid of those. But life, physical, mental, it happens in cycles and waves. There is no way to escape it. And the more you try to resist it and escape it, the only true escape is death, is it not? Without getting grim, how do we become almost dead to those things so they don't cause us suffering? How do we detach, completely take a step back from it by going to the naught point, the zero point or the source? How do we go to the source? By stepping beyond all physical occurrings outside and all the mental occurrings here. This too, this mental internal occurring, the thoughts, the feelings, they are still outside of our true selves. And in ancient yogic knowledge, they knew this from the start, the teachings of Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras, which was written around 3000 years ago. In it, he talks about the source of all reality and how everything came spontaneously from nothingness. Nothingness started to become aware of itself, movement within nothingness. It created awareness, movement within awareness created consciousness, movement within consciousness created mind, movement within mind manifested the body. And that's why a lot of these physical ailments that we have, they can be simply cured by solving problems within the mind. The mind creates a lot of the times physical ailments. So you can see the effectiveness of the placebo effect and simply changing your thought patterns, creating a different outcome in your life, a different healing in your body. So to truly create anything worthwhile and meaningful in our lives, we have to tap into awareness. How do you do that? Awareness can be tapped into when we begin utilizing the faculty of witness. When we start to witness all of the doings that are happening outside, the physical, and all of the doings that are happening mentally. When we watch the watching itself. So right now with me, you can watch what's happening outside. All the problems that you're having, all the good things that are happening, they are watched. All the good thoughts you're having, all the bad thoughts that you're having, they are also being watched. So the key method here is witnessing. We want to tap into emptiness before we create something, otherwise anything we create will be convoluted by our current state of consciousness. So anything you want to create that's going to be worthwhile and meaningful must be created by first emptying our cups. And the best way to empty your cup is to reside as awareness, as true source, to see yourself as the source, to function as the source, not to see the source as something separate 
from you that you're trying to reach, but to realize, to have the knowingness that I am without any labels, without any attachments. When you say, I am this, I am this person, this years old, and I am the kind of person that experiences this, that's already creating attachment and identifying with mind. But if we go beyond that to simply realize that, hold on, without any definition, I simply am. There simply is a watching and observing. When you do that, you've already tapped into awareness. So if you watch your breathing even, some physical phenomenon that's happening subconsciously, like your natural breath, without trying to interrupt your breathing pattern, you simply watch the in-breath and the out-breath. And now you realize there is a watching of the breath. This is a completely neutral activity. There is no judgment happening. This is neither good or bad. So the two main prerequisites to tapping into awareness is number one, full acceptance of what's happening. Whatever's happening either outside or within, there is full, complete acceptance of it. This leads us to the second part, the second quality of witness, which is zero judgment, not judging it. This is neither good nor bad. All of the events that happen to you, this might be tough to accept, all the events that are happening, this is neither good nor bad. This is simply happening. When you can get into a state where you fully just accept whatever's happening the way it's happening, nothing will shake you. You become imperturbable. So that is the goal and that is the method. The method is to simply watch and observe everything that happens. And now from that place, we have a choice to create what we want. So this leads me to the second law, the law of clarity. Once we have tapped into a state of awareness and we have stepped beyond all of the happenings of mind and physical, now we can create. But to create, we must first get clear. So I want you to take a moment to reflect on something. When do you become confident? Do you become confident from a place of uncertainty and a lack of clarity or from a place of pure clarity and complete certainty. If I am clear, confidence is a byproduct. I don't have to fake confidence. Confidence is a natural byproduct of clarity. So for most people who are trying to be confident in their lives, they're trying to fake some confidence and huff and puff their chest, work on getting clear on what it is that you want. And I learned this lesson a very, very long time ago, around 2018, when I was doing a summer internship at a multi-billion dollar company. I had the pleasure, the honor of meeting the CEO and I saw his poise. He was very calm and collected, even though he had a very high stress job. And I would always wondered, what does this guy do? You know, I would love to be like this guy one day. I, I aspire to be like him because back then I was a kid, a junior in university, and I didn't know the direction I wanted to take my life. I for sure didn't know that I was gonna start a YouTube channel and talk about concepts like these and have a dream like this come true. So I always wondered, what is it about him? Like, what does he do? Maybe he does some kind of meditation. And I asked him, Hey, do you do any kind of meditation? What is it that you do? How are you so calm and collected? You're running such a huge organization, you know, like you're the CEO of it. I bet you're like bogged down by all of these decisions you have to make, no? He was like, you know, Quasi, that's a really great question. No one's really asked me that. But for me, I just have a clear vision of where I would like to take this business and where I would like to take my life. That's it, I just have crystal clarity. And so from that moment onwards, I realized that this is one of the fundamental laws to create anything worthwhile in your life. You have to get clear. You have to have a clear picture of what you want, but you also have to have a clear picture of what you don't want. So a quote, Manly Hall actually says in Secret Teachings of All Ages is, man's status in the natural world is determined therefore by the quality of his thinking. The quality of your thinking directly refers to the purity of your thought. If your thoughts are sullied, by resistance, by things that you don't want, unconscious things that you don't really have a clear awareness of, then you will present a dirty image to the mirror of reality, which then it will reflect in your physical reality, uncertain, moving one step forward and one step backward. So I always think if I'm seeing a result outside, what is it, what unclear image am I presenting to the mirror with the clarity of my thoughts? There is simply a formula to gaining clarity that I have used with over a thousand clients of mine. And it's very, very simply put, what plus why plus who equals how and when. When I get clear on what I want, why I want it, and who I must become in order to effortlessly accomplish it, the how it will happen and the when it will happen, it will get figured out just by itself without your interruption. 
So three things that we have to get clear on, but there's also two types of clarity. We have to get clear on what we want and we also have to get clear on what we don't want. You have to get clear on why you don't want it, why you want it and why you don't want the opposite to happen. And you also have to get clear on who you must become and who you can no longer tolerate being from this moment forward. The two types of clarity of desire and aversion has to happen for these three main things. So I would like to give you an example to exemplify for me personally, how I think about this that has helped me. So in the instance of one of the goals that I have this year, which is to have a million subscribers on the channel. And again, I appreciate all of your help. I know, you know, if you're enjoying this, you're gonna share it with a friend, etc. And sharing this message really helps us out and helps me get my message out there and helps us reach our goal of getting to a million subscribers and sharing this mes message with a lot more people. But anyway, in the instance of my goal with getting to a million subscribers, I know what it is that I want. I want a million subscribers and I don't want to not have more subscribers or growth on the channel. What I want, what I don't want. Why? Why? Because I want to be exceptional. For me, one of my core desires is to be exceptional at whatever it is that I do and experience growth in it. Why do I not want it? Why, what do I not want? I don't want to be mediocre. That's my why of what I would like to get away from. I am fearful of being mediocre and not doing something exceptional. Who must I become? I must become the kind of YouTuber that puts a lot of work into his videos, that doesn't get lazy in his thinking, the kind of YouTuber that's worthy of a million subscribers. So just think about this right now. Anytime you think about the goal that you have, the money that you wanna make, the kind of relationship that you wanna have, you immediately know the answer of who you must become. You immediately know the answer of why you want it. You just have to do some digging because only you have the answers to this question. So for me, why I want it is I fear mediocrity. I would love to be exceptional, which is the opposite end of that. And who must I be? Well, I must be that 1 million subscriber kind of YouTuber who works hard and I must not be someone who doesn't do his utmost to succeed with YouTube and gets lazy with making his content. And that's why a lot of my content is 20, 30 minutes. I make all of these extensive guides and I try to give away as much as I can for free. So I can impact and help you guys, but this is also an expression of who I have chosen to become. Does that make sense? You have to get clear on these three things. For every single goal that you have, if you just take a piece of paper, you make three columns and two sub columns of what you want, what you don't want, why you want it, why you don't want the opposite, who you must become and who you must no longer continue to be moving forward. If you get clear on these three things and you just remind yourself of this every single day, the how and when will naturally come by itself. And the crucial part here to understand is human beings, we are driven by survival, which means we have a natural aversion to pain. And our biological programming to survive is a lot stronger than our biological programming to thrive. We want to thrive because we want to avoid death, right? So you have to use both pain and pleasure to manipulate your psychology and move towards what you want. So you have to therefore get clear on what you don't want. But the key is to focus 50% or more of your attention to what is wanted rather than what is not wanted. So the problem with most people is because what they don't want is so unconscious, they unconsciously focus on what they don't want. They're not even clear why they wanna move away from what they wanna move away from. They're not even clear on who they must become and who they must avoid being. So they keep focusing in on those old stories of how they're such a victim and how life never goes their way and how there's always a bill to be paid because they're not aware of this internal conversation that's happening. It is deeply unconscious. There is no awareness, there is no consciousness, and finally, there is no clarity. Just doing these two things alone will completely drastically change your life. Once you've gotten clear on these three things, it's now time to move to law number three, the law of creation. Before I get to law number three, I would really appreciate, if you're enjoying this video right now, you think this is valuable, to share it with at least three friends of yours. This again helps us get our message out there. There's nothing more valuable than a friend sharing something valuable to another friend and give them one good reason why they would watch it because a lot of people just put things in the back burner and never really watch it. So I would really, really appreciate that. It really helps us grow and spread this message out there. As you can tell, we don't really run ads or do any sponsorships on this channel. So I would appreciate it if you shared this with as many friends, if not at least three friends of yours who would benefit from this so we can get this message out there and help us achieve our mission of helping every single human being on earth to master their destiny. So 
Let's continue to the regular programming, which is law number three, creation. To understand creation, I would like to invoke one of the greatest masters that ever lived, Hermes Trismegistus. So if many of you have read this book called The Kybalion, you know who Hermes Trismegistus is. But did you know that the last name Trismegistus actually has a meaning? Trismegistus literally translates to thrice greatest. Why? He mastered the three planes of existence. The physical plane, the lowest plane of all, the mental plane, the middle plane, and the highest plane, the spiritual plane. The mastery of these three planes makes you the god of all gods. The Egyptians called him the god of all gods. For us to master the creation process, there must be alignment and harmony, congruence in these three planes. For example, if my spirit wants to experience something, but mentally I think something else and physically I do something else, there is complete incongruency spiritually, mentally, and physically. Therefore, the likelihood that that goal will come into play is very, very low. And that's why awareness and clarity are so crucial. Okay, so to master the lowest plane of all, the physical plane, we must take physical action. To arrange this material plane, the easiest way to do that is to go out there and act. Do what you think you must do in order to move towards the goal you want to move towards. That's simply it. Take physical action. You might have heard many gurus and manifestation teachers tell you, don't take action. You must just sit on your couch and visualize until it happens by itself. And to that I say complete bullshit because they have a fundamental misunderstanding that mindset and the internal world is a separate attachment from the external outer world and physical action. But these three planes are interconnected. You know, it's that great story of the man who was drowning. He's like, God is gonna save me, God is gonna save me. And then someone sends a boat. Boat's like, hey, do you, want, do you need some help? Looks like you're drowning. He's like, no, 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 God's gonna save me, God's gonna save me. Another boat comes. No, 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 don't worry about it. God is gonna save me, I'm just waiting for God. Third boat comes, fourth boat, six boats. God is gonna save me, don't worry. And at the end, God comes down, he's like, I sent you six fucking boats. What gives? Why, why didn't you take them? If the easiest path to you achieving your goals is simply to take action, why would you not do it? Why would you take the hard path of trying to materialize the goal with your crazy magician abilities? We need alignment in all three planes, therefore taking action is a complete necessity. But it is not the only way. It is only ineffective when you just take action, when you have some incongruent beliefs within you, incongruent thoughts, and your spirit's not completely aligned to what you want, and you're just forcing yourself, you're grinding your gears, and you're just taking action because that's what you think you should do. What we want to do is take the path of least resistance, and this is how. The next plane we must master is the mental plane, and this is done through visualization or mental conception of the achievement of the goal. We want to see how the goal can get achieved either by itself or even through our action. That is when you invoke the power of your intention. So remember, when we have an intention, the most physical expression of the intention is when we do something, when we take physical action. But the mental expression of intention is the conception of the achievement of the goal. Fancy words, I know but simply you have to be able to see in your mind's eye. Now, this doesn't have to be a visual picture for those of you who claim you have uh, aphantasia. It could also simply be an affirmation, could be any other method that you use to mentally affirm to yourself, to mentally conceive that the goal has been achieved. Finally, the mastery of the spiritual plane is involved through meditation. Meditation, AKA connecting with source. That is why we enlist the law of awareness at all times to witness and observe. And meditation simply means the practice of becoming meditative, connecting with the source. Now you may simply meditate by breathing, do different exercises, different guided meditation, whatever you do that allows you to connect to source is fine. As one of my great friends describes it, he says meditation is receiving downloads from the source or God and visualization is upload. We're uploading information. I know these are gross generalizations. I actually made a playlist for you that I'm gonna share with you at the end that is going to show you how to implement each and every single one of these laws. This is gonna be like over an hour worth of material that I've compiled for you that is going to teach you how to um, implement every single, each and every single one of these laws completely free for you to access. Our paid clients have access to this, but I'm just gonna share it with you for free because I really want you to get results. And if the time is right and you wanna work together, 
want my help to take your life to the next level, I would love for that to happen as well. But for the time being, I would love for you to just literally get tangible results from watching my free videos. So that is law number three, the law of creation. The final law that we have to master is the law of balance. The law of balance is one of the hallmarks of ancient Masonic teaching. Manly Hall in the book, Secret Teachings of All Ages, directly says this, the heart and mind must be brought into perfect equilibrium before true thinking or true spirituality can be attained. What does that mean? In ancient yogic knowledge, there's this saying that we must attain balance between Vairagya and Abhyasa. Patanjali talked about this in the Yoga Sutra, again, 3000 years ago, so that you can see all of these similarities between all the teachings. Because if you do not bring yourself into balance, the universe will create this balance because the universe is a perfectly balanced system. It's never out of balance. Whenever you disturb a balance, then there's a potential that creates another balance. So when I take an object and I raise it from ground level, it gains gravitational potential energy. Drop that object, the law of energy conservation is perfect. The gravitational potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy as it drops until it hits the ground. Then that energy dissipates into impact and creating sound and creating uh, an indent in the floor or whatever surface it drops in. The law of conservation, it's a perfect system and there is perfect balance within all of these systems. To understand this further, the law of Vairagya and Abhyasa states that there must be balance between the efforts that we have and the surrender that we have. So this is a fancy way of saying, whatever we do, we must do it without the ex expectation of receiving. Have you ever noticed how in your life, whenever you've given, given up all expectation, you've put in a lot of effort, but you didn't expect anything. You just said, you know what? I'm just doing for the sake of doing. The fruits of labor are not my responsibility. That is up to God. All of a sudden, one day it just happened naturally. One day you just completely gave up on it. And then you look back at it, you're like, holy crap, it happened. Or you go back to your vision board or some goal that you set, maybe a few months or years down the line, you're like, holy crap. I can't believe this happened. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me multiple times. And this is just a mechanism of focus and defocus. When we focus on our goals, we bring it to our mind. When we defocus, we surrender it to God. God takes care of the rest. So in this manner, we're co-creating our realities. And when we focus a little bit too much and we feel anxious or we feel a little too attached, we keep checking our phones, we keep checking our bank accounts, or we keep checking whatever it is that we're expecting, we seemingly resist it. The more we want that partner to like us or that person to like us or that interview to succeed, the more we create resistance. But as soon as we say, you know what, this is a game. Whatever happens will happen. If this doesn't happen, then there's something better in store for me anyways. All of a sudden, the thing that you want happens. When you're in equilibrium, you're moving with the path at the path of least resistance. You don't have a lot of resistance in the path that you're moving. So imagine this, we have intention energy that is utilized to achieve our goals. When we have too much attachment, we can't 100% use that intention energy. It's getting sucked into resisting failure. Do you understand this? When I'm thinking, when I'm attached to my outcome, I'm subconsciously saying to myself, please don't fail, please don't fuck it up. Please be careful. So most of my intention energy is not being used up as intention energy. 97% of my intention energy is getting directed to resisting failure. And the 3% of my intention energy, you know, this is a hypothetical balance, is getting directed into, let's go towards the goal. Let's go towards the goal. What if we could direct 100% of that intention energy to saying, I don't care what happens. I am free. God is with me. Let's just fucking go. If we fail, then we fail whatever, then we're gonna learn a lesson, whatever it is. Do you not feel the weight of the world just drop off your shoulders and you feel free like a child to move towards your goals? You have so much energy, there's so much of these light, joyous, high vibration feelings that you can just simply zip towards your goals. Well, why can't goal achievement be like that all the time? That is the crucial point. When you reach this balance, you will see that any endeavor that you have in your life, Vairagya and Abhyasa, will be an expression of it. You will simply be in balance at all times and move completely free, completely uninhibited. That is when you know that you are in balance and life just simply unfolds naturally by itself and it's all miraculous and beautiful. Two key things I want you to understand to be able to implement this for yourself is number one, know that all of us, we have an outcome goal. We would like to see an outcome happen, but is the outcome goal 100% in our control? Absolutely not. The outcome goal is often a second order or a third order consequence. Us doing something, of us focusing on something, of us making an intention to achieving something. Does that mean you should never set outcome goals? Absolutely not. You should always set outcome goals on what you would like to accomplish. But what you should also do 
is set a process goal, an input goal of what you are willing to sacrifice, what you are willing to do in order to achieve this goal. In ancient times, there was always talk of sacrifice to the gods in order to experience something. What is the trade? What is the transaction you're making? Because remember, energy is always conserved. What you give is what you get. If I'm giving to you guys and I'm sharing value, I will get customers, there is no doubt about it. People will know, like, and trust me and will want to work with me. But if I don't give and I just expect customers to come to me and I just hide everything and I keep it closed off, then people are also going to reflect being closed off. So this is always a transaction. So you always have to think about the process goal. And I'm gonna give you an example to demonstrate this so this makes a lot of sense to you. Last month in January, I set the outcome goal for me to do two million views on the channel. What am I willing to give? What is the process goal that I think is going to help me get there? Well, I think if I make four really good videos, I will get there. So what did I do? I worked my ass off to make four really good videos, edit them, create really good thumbnails, and just pour my heart into it. And I just left the rest to God. Did the goal happen? Did I get to two million views? I did not. We got 900,000 views. Am I unhappy with that? Absolutely not. One important thing to note is it's not always going to come to life immediately because remember, the divine works in its own timing. It doesn't work on your timing, it works in its own timing. So what could have happened was I could have gotten 4 million views or I could have gotten even less. That's not up to me. I did what I said that I was gonna do. The rest is up to God. I am not attached to it. I am completely surrendered. What if this month we get to 3 million views? I'm open to that, but I know I have confidence. Within me, the goal has already happened. So I'm not too bothered about it. And I know that it is going to happen. And we might even hit it this month. It looks like we're on track as of right now to hitting that goal this month. And that is the law of consciousness. That is the law of balance. Whatever you hold in mind long enough, it has to manifest. There is no other way. If you keep focusing on it every single day, you just keep reminding yourself of the goal every single day, it has to manifest. So I wanna share with you a few case studies of people who've actually applied these four laws to reality creation. And once they've applied these, what happened to their lives? So it's Ryan Penley. When he joined us in December, 2023, he literally just launched this book and then he started working with us. And uh, literally a few months later, January of, I believe it was January 23rd or 24th, his book now is number one in the alcoholism genre. His book's name is Man Up, Sober Up. It's become the bestseller, the number one bestseller and the number one release in the alcoholism genre. He is absolutely crushing it. And this again is because of the mastery of these four laws. This other client of ours, Christoph joined us and he was doing around two to three K a month. He has a business in herbalism. He was making two to three K a month consistently. He joined us, worked with us to get to five K a month consistently so he can provide more for his family and create basically the life that he wanted to live. What he didn't realize what he was, he had subconscious money blocks and he just couldn't get himself to make more, pitch his services more. After joining us, literally within the first couple of weeks of January of 2024, he's already made 12K just that month. He's sitting at higher than 12K right now, I'm pretty sure. This is the highest he's ever made. And this is all a result, again, of the mastery of these four main laws. One of our other clients who's done something really impressive, he joined us at 60 to 80K a month. He has a business in chiropractic practice. And you know he'd been in different coaching programs, immersion events, and since starting this program, he mentions he's gone from a staff of four to a staff of nine high-powered performers, went from 60 to 80K a month. Just last month, he did his first $200,000 month, working 70% of what he used to work. So now he gets to spend more time with his daughters, watch them as they grow. And his main thing was vision becoming aware and connecting more and more with that vision of what he wants to create, which is a eight figure business while he works less. Meditation is a key practice for him. What I've gone and done for you is I made an unlisted playlist, cannot be accessed by anyone else, just by you for watching this video, of four videos that is going to help you master each of these laws. You can click right here to access it, and it's completely free for you to access. It's literally right on YouTube. There's no reason why you shouldn't watch it. And make sure you save it as well so you can keep coming back to it. And once you've done so, what I want you to do is come here and comment to let me know your three biggest takeaways. I'm really looking forward to your success, fellow reality creator. Thank you.